This is the story of a prosperous Irish merchant from Kilkenny who backed the wrong side in the English Civil War and was ultimately offered that famous choice of going to hell or Connacht. The city of Kilkenny is located in the southeast of Ireland on the banks of the River Nore. The city's medieval streets are a favourite tourist destination with its well-known craft and design workshops. On Parliament Street, sitting alongside the later Georgian architecture, is a late 16th century merchant's townhouse complex. The complex was built by John Roth Fitzpiers between 1594 and 1610 and is made up of three houses, three enclosed courtyards and a large reconstructed garden with orchard. A burgage plot usually consisted of a house on a long and narrow plot of land with a narrow street frontage. Rental payment or tenure was usually in the form of money. Many burgage plots were located within the defences of the local town. Such towns and their surrounding lands would have been granted to the local lords in many cases as far back as a Norman invasion. Rothhaus is the only remaining example of a complete burgage plot in Ireland. In the case of Rothhaus, there were two gardens that ran the length of the plot right up to the city walls. Archaeological excavations in 2008 uncovered the original layout of the garden, including the seeds and pollen of 17th century plants, which were also discovered. The garden now boasts heritage varieties of vegetables, herbs, fruits and flowers that would have been grown in the 17th century and is laid out in a similar style to what John Roth and his family once enjoyed. The Roth family probably came to Kilkenny from Wales at some time in the 15th century. In origin they were Flemish. The Roths were one of the main wealthy and influential families who held many of the high offices in Kilkenny city. The impetus to build a prestigious city centre dwelling would have been strong, providing Roth with a venue for displaying his personal wealth and possibly his wares, as the ground floor street front is thought to have comprised of a shop front and is documented as an importer of silks, damasks and velvets. Kilkenny's merchants like the Roths lived in great comfort in comparison to other inhabitants of the city. The will of John Roth records the opulence of the possessions he bequeathed to his family, Included amongst the domestic furniture were, among others, quote, all my drawing tables, bedsteads, cupboards, livery cupboards, wainscot, chairs, my great cypress chest, my pewter, brass, iron beddings of feathers and flocks. In 1642, the Confederation of Kilkenny was formed. The Confederation was a provisional government set up by the Catholic Anglo-Irish and Native Irish to defend the Catholic faith and supported the English King Charles I during the English Civil War, which had broken out that same year. The hope was that by supporting the Royalists, the King might look more favourably on the Catholic faith, and some ecclesiastical assembly meetings are thought to have been held at Roth House. In 1649, the execution of Charles I closed all Irish hope. And in 1649, Oliver Cromwell landed in Ireland to exact revenge in the Irish Confederates and Royalists. Besides this, Cromwell was also here to exact revenge on the slaughter of Protestant settlers or planters in the north of Ireland, because in 1641 there had been a great rebellion that had seen the deaths of thousands of men, women and children. He stated, quote, You, unprovoked, but the English to the most unheard of and most barbarous massacre without respect of sex or age that ever the sun beheld, at a time when Ireland was in perfect peace. In 1650, Kilkenny was besieged by Cromwell for a week before its ultimate surrender. In 1652, Cromwell issued his Act of Settlement. Only those who could prove their, quote, constant good affection to the cause of the English Parliament could keep their estates. In 1654, an order to clear Kilkenny was issued with the citizens to be transplanted to the west of Ireland and the province of Connacht. At this time, the house was owned by a Peter Roth. A survey was undertaken with a view to reallocating properties to those who had supported or could prove their constant good affection to the English Parliament. In terms of Kilkenny and certainly Ireland's history, the impact of this transplantation of the merchant class came to be viewed as a ruthless stratagem calculated to destroy, as one historian put it, quote, an educated and progressive class. 
The result of this tactic, he continued, was a severe cultural setback to Ireland, severing many valuable links with the continent. On a wider stage, it also contributed to the decline of Kilkenny's importance. So for at least seven years, people like the Roths may have thought that their own confederation was the new norm. And there have been criticism that this was a lost opportunity for Ireland to become independent from England because England was in such a weakened state because of the civil war in England. Like many of the rich merchants of this time, it is thought that Peter Roth's properties were also confiscated, and in 1653 he and his household were removed to Connacht. A year later, Peter died. A relative of Peter's who was also dispossessed gives an idea of what was lost to a great many that had not been able to prove their constant and good affection. This man was Sir Robert Roth, and he lost his 3,211 acres, which were divided up between many of the Cromwellian soldiers as payment for their service. His family, household and property transplanted with him consisted of 23 persons, 24 cows, 4 yearlings, 30 garrons, 111 sheep and the produce of 50 acres of winter corn. And in the place of their 3,211 acres, they were given 158 acres in the county of Galway. There isn't a tree to hang a man, water to drown a man, nor soil to bury a man. So said, or words to that effect, of a Cromwellian officer named Ludlow, of the desolate burren in the west of Ireland. This video barely touches on the extreme bloodshed and suffering that occurred in Ireland over this period, which I do hope to return to. Until then, thanks for watching and supporting my channel.